only my original, original viewers will remember this book series. It is the book series that carried me through 4th and 5th grade, and it is the book series that I will bring back on the channel, and I'm sure the originals will remember it. Hello, fellow bookquesters! It is I, Aram the Bookquester. So today, I have this epic book, The Last Kids on Earth, and the Midnight Blade, book 5 of the Last Kids on Earth series by Max Brownlee himself, illustrated by Douglas Holgate, and well, let's get right on to it. So, basically, Jack Sullivan, as you probably remember him, he is a boy, a post-apocalyptic hero. Now, the, the entire story is based on a post-apocalyptic Earth, where everything is run by run on by zombies, vine thingies, which are vines that go through houses and destroys everything, and all sorts of monsters. Duh. And after a couple books of Jack Sullivan adventures, we all know what kind of monsters exist and what kind of villain there are, and that Razok the Ancient is the one who caused the ap apocalypse, and he's trying to come into this world and destroy and to destroy it. That is basically what is happening. Now, from the last book, as we probably remember, Gast is in our world. And Gast is the general who, can, who has the ability to control zombies. He is the general of the evil, evil Razok the Ancient, and he they are trying to bring the Razok the Ancient into the world. And now, that is probably should be stopped. So, they go to Gazd, and since he's a giant rat who is made out of rats and toy action figures, well, we need to cut off his tail. Because his tail is what he uses to control the zombies. And in the first few chapters of the book, Jack Sullivan and the team succeed, and they cut off Gazd's tail. But their troubles are just beginning. Jack Sullivan is getting trained by Bartle to use his used the Lucifer Slicer to control zombies. Because he had done that in a moment of complete fear and anxiety. So we needed to know how that worked. Now it wasn't like any X-Men first class movie training montage thing, because it really, really didn't work. God dang it. Well, what are we supposed to do, huh? Oh god. And then Jack Sullivan goes to the scrappin alongside with the Bartle. And Bartle gets Jack Sullivan a glove. A glove made out of scrapkin flesh. Scrapkin by the way is a giant sea monster, in case you didn't remember. And they and they get the glove, and finally he might retain the ability to control zombies. It's way easier with the glove. But another new problem is coming to play. Thrall. Remember him from the zombie parade? Well, he's coming back, and he's been regenerating his body by sucking the life out of normal and good monsters. And he is coming, and when he does, well, the world will end as we know it, and Razog will be brought to back into this world. Which is not good, and we need to stop him. And Thrall takes the rat tail so he can control the dead, duh. And he, what he also does, he kills Bardle in a battle. And Bardle dies, and his final words to Jack Sullivan is, the choice is in your hands, it is a great burden, or something along those lines. And Jack doesn't understand what it means until the last minute. In the final battle against Thrall, the evil guy, we fight him and we shoot him with globs, which destroys the vine thingies, and we fight the evil, evil Thrall. And Jack realizes that with the cosmic glove and the huge and the Lucifer slicer, he can suck Gast's ability that is inside the tail into his hand. And that he could become something more, and he could be the general of the zombies. And he does just that, and he sucks everything, the energy and Gast's ability out into his finger and he takes everything. Or so he thought. But in reality, the, the last words Thrall says before he disappears, he says, I hope you get used to the sight of bones, Jack Sullivan. 
And we find out what that means at the end of the book. When we, when we do some research using a book about that evil stuff and Razok and the monsters. Well, we find out that they, we need to use... Basically, if when that ability is taken away and some parts of it are left, the, the, what's left... If you, if you can wield what's left, you get a special new ability. And that ability is not to control zombies, but to control skeletons. So, in my mind, and in Jack Sullivan's mind, what we're gonna see fairly soon... ...is... Wait a minute. It's coming is that the undead versus the actual dead is what's probably gonna happen with Thrall controlling mm -hmm. the dead and the dead and our dear Jack Sullivan controlling the undead. It's gonna be a pretty epic battle and that is the end of the book. And well, The Last Kiss on Earth really is just pure deja vu for me. As you probably don't remember, a couple of years back, the first book was a sacramental book, and it's listed in my sacramental playlist that is in the description below. And it is such a series. Like, every time I needed a book to read, I would always buy some from the series. It's like a comic book series for me. And although it's not like a high-level book or like a very meaningful read, it gives pure entertainment and it just heals me from all the complicated fantasy, complicated mystery, which I love, but I need a breather from that, mind you. And the annoying philosophical books and the sad and miserable realistic fiction books. And the annoying historical fiction books. Of course, I'm just kidding. I love all of those. Kind of. Kind of. Anyway, it is such a great book, I highly recommend to you. Max Brallier hasn't lost his touch, even though I finally read his new work after literally a year after it came out. And I highly recommend it to you, as I already said. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester, that book series that I read in a ski trip at 12 p.m. in a cabin with my friends on my bunk bed. And, well, it's the book that I couldn't take my hands off, and Max Brawlier still has that touch.